Uh, our first talk this morning is Christy Dudley. She's going to be speaking on Beyond the Application, Cellular Privacy Regulation. And I just want to let everybody know at the back of the room, you saw some little pods when you walk in. After this talks, before you leave, if you'd like to, you can opt in, scan your badge on that, and it'll send you an email later that you can do a survey to follow up with and you know uh, provide us some feedback. So we'd really appreciate that. Christy? Okay. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to talk about who I am. I have a background in electrical engineering, and I worked for many years as a network engineer. I worked with telcos, and I worked with... Uh, telecommunications and, and networking. I became bored, so I went to law school. Uh, and now I've done research assisting uh, professors doing privacy research and privacy audits. Okay, first of all, uh, 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 I'm not a lawyer. I like to talk about the law, um, but you shouldn't be taking anything that I say as uh, a, a guidance in making decisions. Uh, it's just a general information. So first of all, talk about the problem. The problem, uh, the FCC um, issued a notice and comment um, because Senator Franken became alarmed Everybody's heard about uh, specifically Carrier IQ. Um, and it made the rounds, it made the political rounds, and in the slow machinery that is government, it finally hit the FCC. Uh, Senator Franken petitioned, and they issued a notice. Uh, the way rules are changed is a notice is issued, um, they open up a comment period, and uh, for a minimum time of 30 days, uh, and then they make their ruling. Uh, they asked some really interesting questions in this uh, notice that they issued. Um, what obligations should apply? Uh, how, um, how should the carriers take reasonable measure um, to protect um, on our authorized access. And a lot of really good questions were asked in this. Of course, um, there were 16 total. Uh, nobody actually answered them in their comments, but um, great questions. Uh, so what is CP&I? CP&I is the mandate that the FCC has to regulate privacy for customer proprietary network information. Um, location information is specifically mentioned in the statute. Uh, it's, this is originally, the, the history of uh, CPNI was that um, it, was, it was passed so that uh, carriers would interconnect because they have to pass information on their customers back and forth for carriers to interconnect. And so they wanted to protect the customer privacy and prevent one uh, carrier from trying to market to the other carrier's customers so that um, they would be more willing to, to do what they need to do to uh, establish a, a competitive multi-vendor environment. Um, it included uh, billing information and Verizon, of course, has been pushing the limits. Uh, they tried to use their um, customer disconnect requests for number portability uh, to market to those customers, and the, the um, courts decided that that was a violation of CP&I. Um, one interesting facet of CP&I is that it has to be disclosed to the customers upon request. This is... Uh, a, a big stickling point because right now location information is not considered CPNI, um, and so there is no carrier, uh, no cell phone carrier who will disclose the location information they collect. Um, so, um, who came out against this regulation? Um, uh, Carriers, uh, they 
they made some really interesting arguments about how the carrier or the industry is just fine about regulating this, and they're now interoperating very well. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission, many people might know that they're involved in, and they're increasingly involved in regulating uh, apps that go on cell phones um, and regulating the privacy. Uh, they have a lot of opt-in. There's uh, workshops that they hold regularly to, to get developers on board with uh, making apps at least transparent as to the data collected. Uh, but this doesn't cover the baseband section of the handset. If uh, the architecture of the handset is um, such that the user land is pretty much where the applications are expected to, to uh, occupy. Um, the, the idea that the industry can self-regulate is kind of ridiculous. Um, uh, researchers have announced, I believe at this conference, that uh, carrier IQ was a problem that was hidden from the users. Carrier IQ operates both in user land collecting uh, data that's generated by the user as well as the baseband uh, where the users can't access. And they, they deliberately fired the, firewalled those off so that the user couldn't um, cause problems with the, the radio on the telephone. But they've managed to bridge those with this application. So it doesn't really fall under the purview of the um, Trade Commission. Um, and what's, what's even uh, a little bit uh, disturbing is I, I have a T-Mobile phone which I cannot disable this application without uh, totally rooting the phone. Um, I can't imagine why the, the carriers would call this self-regulation. They have free reign to do anything and they have no obligation to inform the users of uh, what they're doing. Um, as I mentioned before, the Trade Commission is deeply involved. It's engaged in, um, in providing customer privacy, and it also supports uh, greater regulation from the Federal Communications Commission. Um, what, what, what's interesting for the argument about providing good service, I, I agree that Carrier IQ is... Uh, a helpful tool in diagnosing problems. But uh, the kinds of arguments they're putting forth are the exact same arguments they put forth for Carter Phone, which uh, was the first decision that enabled uh, the telephone network to be opened up so you can plug your modem in. And it's, it's the same quality argument. It's the same argument that they need this to be able to provide good service. Well... Carrier IQ was developed with a user interface. It was marketed with a user interface. It's the carriers that decided that the users didn't need to know about it. Um, the alarm industry um, submitted a comment that was very interesting, and I think it probably got downplayed in the light of how the profusion of devices that um, are getting the uh, modem chips um, or the or cellular modems stuck in them. Uh, the alarm industry, you have your wireless modems, but there's all sorts of other embedded technology that the FCC needs to deal with. Uh, I was reading a, a court decision about privacy on the handset and, and uh, incident to arrest and how the Supreme Court really needs to decide on that. Well, the FCC really needs to decide on not just handsets as you expect a normal telephone to work, but also embedded devices and the kinds of uh, data collections that can happen over the air uh, with these devices. So what kind of a solution can we expect from this? Uh, there are really two approaches to regulation. Give the customer more control and hold carriers more accountable. And both sides have their merits. Um, but I think, um, I think there could be um, both. 
give the carriers a choice as to whether they're going to be held accountable or they're going to allow the users and walk the users through how to change things if they so desire. Um, by incentivizing um, the carriers to uh, grant users control, uh, the, the youth, everybody has the opportunity to win in that situation. But uh, you, many users don't want control. Many users don't want to be able to get in and root their handset, and they want to have a trustworthy, reliable system, and that should be built into the system as well. Um, yeah, one of the big issues with uh, currently, if I wanted to remove carrier IQ from my phone, I have to root it. I have to remove all the applications that come pre-installed. And so what winds up happening is um, the carriers open up um, either through vulnerabilities in the applications that are installed or uh, by forcing me to root my phone, um, they have uh, opened up a, a whole nother vector for um, malware. Okay, um, there's a, a real bonus for location privacy uh, if it is uh, decided to be CPNI. Um, one of the biggest challenges in the courts right now is deciding um, whether a subpoena is required uh, to get that location information from various uh, sources. Carrier IQ is not a telecommunications provider. They're uh, an application service, and they collect your location information. So there's no, uh, there's no court order required to get your location information from that third party. In fact, they're not even required to protect it. So uh, by uh, deciding that location information is CPNI, it requires them to get a court order uh, to uh, collect that. So what is the chances that um, this is actually going to make a change and it's actually going to make a difference in the world um, rather than just another agency spinning their wheels? Uh, I, I put this together before the whole big uh, uh, FISA scandal and uh, Privacy has been on the upswing. Uh, one of the good things about this is uh, one of the biggest challenges in advocating for privacy is the national security card. Um, whenever the uh, national security becomes an issue, when they uh, bring up a, a problem, then privacy goes out the window. Uh, that might not be true anymore, but... Um, that's, that's how it's been in the past. But this is corporations collecting uh, private data. And it's corporations who are using it uh, for their own ends. So I think there's a pretty good chance um, that there will be new regulation. Um, the telcos will sue because that's what they do. Um, but they won't go very far. Um, they'll try and keep it tied up in court. Um, and enforcement is going to be a, a really big problem as well. So anyway, um, that pretty much concludes my presentation. Um, I think I might have time for questions. So, yes. Well, carrier store data and carrier IQ stores data. This is a service um, where they collect data from your phone and provide an interface to the carrier. So each carrier makes a decision on how long it's going to store data. Wired uh, recently published, well, not so recently published an article um, outlining it. Uh, I believe the minimum is two years. Um, uh, but don't quote me on that. Uh, Carrier IQ has not made clear how long they store any data. Uh, so that's, that's a big unknown there, and they're not, they're not talking about that.
Uh, oh, uh, defense. That's that's the national security card. Um, if if you have a legitimate law enforcement request, then there's a, a very straightforward process to do that. Um, and this doesn't impede law enforcement at all to to regulate privacy, uh, CPNI privacy. Um, it doesn't it doesn't slow that down. Um, the idea and, and national security they they have their own issues, but this is this is just a business issue. It's a uh, um, whether they can sell your data, whether the or what 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 rights and responsibilities do they have to protect that data? CPNI statutorily must be protected, um, and it's it's the carrier's responsibility to safeguard it. But if it's not CPNI, if your location data is not CPNI, they have no obligation to safeguard your data, other than general customer expectation um, and a few state laws. So, is that? Okay. Well, I thank you. And, oh, another question. Yeah, their, their response was, please don't include us in the CPNI decision. We're not, we're not handsets. You shouldn't count us. And to an extent, you think, well, who cares about location privacy for an alarm system because it's always fixed in your house. Um, but the kinds of decisions and exceptions I might make for the alarm industry um, could apply to the tablet industry or the RC car industry or the uh, helicopters. Um, they stick mobile uh, devices in a helicopter for a <laughs> controller or whatever they might think to, to stick a mobile device in. Um, uh, the, uh, if, if exceptions are made, significant exceptions are made for alarm industry, then all these other not handset devices could get caught up in the, in the mix. So. I'm not, I'm not sure I understand your question. So, many modern service providers for alarm, home automation, and so on, you know, smart home products have an application right. that do use location information. Right. Do you think that consideration might tie into the decision that they make? Uh, I really, I, I can't. I don't think they can fathom um, the extent to which um, this location information might be, be an issue. I suspect with all the discussions about copyright and jailbreaking phones versus tablets and, and all these other um, challenges that the mobile industry is facing right now, um, I'm hoping the FCC is keyed into that. And based on the, the questions, um, I actually have the complete list. <laughs> it's kind of fine print there. But um, they asked a lot of really great questions, um, which really um, makes me confident that they're clued in to the, to the technical issues um, surrounding the, the whole space. So, okay.